Today, of course, we got to talk about my experience at YBLS 2018. That is a Young Black Leadership Summit put on by Turning Point USA. Now, this event was a once in a lifetime experience. It was transformative. It was a lot of different things. It was it was fantastic. It was a total 100 percent success. Now, I'm going to tell you my point of view, you know, the things I went through in the airport while I was there, everything, just my total experience. I have video of everything that was going on inside the White House, outside the White House and whatnot. And I'll place that in a separate video. And you may see clips of that here and there in this particular talk. But let's just get straight to it. First of all, I left here in Chattanooga at about 630 a.m. Thursday. And I got back here about 9 p.m. As soon as I landed in New York is when things started to happen, both positive and negative, but mostly positive. Now, when I went to New York, I had on my MAGA hat. All right. Now, some of you may have seen this picture that has gone viral. I had no idea that would do that. I was just in the airport. I'm getting these thousand mile stares in my face. And I'm like, OK, I took a picture of myself right now in here and just put it on there and share that particular moment that particular experience i was having and then i'm getting reposted everywhere i'm on reddit i'm you know it, it was really crazy now i'm thinking okay is it because i'm handsome or what i don't know what's really going on but <laughs> whatever the case may be that was how the trip started with the picture of mine going viral so i get on the plane i go from LaGuardia to dc which is obviously where it was and then i'm greeted in the airport by a guy he was in the military and he just shook my hand and said, thank you. I appreciate you for being brave because, you know, it was really hard to wear that in D.C. and a lot of these liberal areas. And then I had two young black men come up to me and said that, you know, they were doing a documentary or they were doing some kind of vlogging. And they just asked a couple of questions about the hat. He was like, what's up with the hat? Now, these young gentlemen were very respectful. It was no malice intent. None of that was going on. They were just curious and had questions. Now, I think I was able to sprinkle a little bit of red pill in at least one of them because every point I made about the Democratic Party wanting to keep us down and you know, the auto welfare stuff and the illegal immigration, I think I got them on that. When I said, why would you allow this migrant caravan to come in? They were trying to say, well, you know, at a certain point, you can't just say they can't come in because this land was taken. It's like, all right, well, hey, that's everywhere. You know, go to South Africa. You got people that live there that are black that, that were not the original people. So at what point do we say this land is, you know, and I saw the one guy, he was nodding his head and smiling. I'm like, OK, you, you red pill or I'm sprinkling the red pill on you right now. But that's how it started. So we fast forward away from the airport to the actual place. Now we're in downtown D.C. We're at the Liaison Hotel and also the Hyatt is one across from the other you could just walk across the street and be right in the other hotel now thursday it was not anything scheduled this was just people checking in you know just getting into the hotel room and whatnot so i don't think it would be anything going on but that day was extremely busy because when i got there so many people knew who i was i was totally blown away i had no idea that i had that big of an impact people came up to me and said hey you know, I drove 24 hours. Matter of fact, I placed a picture of the screen before you of the young man right here. 17 years old, drove 24 hours, I think, from Texas to be here. Now, he did have somebody with him. But at the same time, I mean, that's a very long trip. All right. He drove from Texas. Some A lot of people came up to me and said their moms watch me all the time. And they need to get a picture with me because, you know, they couldn't go home without a picture of AVL to send to their mother. It was really overwhelming. I had no idea that there were so many people that know who I am and that watch me every day. People were singing along to the intro music. I was like, wow, this is really, really crazy. But the energy in there was great. I mean, a lot of just really respectful, talented, energetic and smart young people coming up to you, talking to you. It was really, really refreshing. Absolutely, 100%. So most of the day on Thursday, I spent just meeting and greeting the people that were coming to the actual conference. We were in the lobby of the Liaison Hotel. That's where a lot of the, you know, the talking and whatnot happened. A lot of deep discussions, a lot of light discussions. It was just really good on Thursday. We took a lot of pictures with each other. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
it was a surprise to me that at about 7.30, we had Donald Trump Jr. come through. And I got a picture of him. If you've not seen that, I'll place that on the screen before you. He gave a great speech. He was really energetic, uh, a really just down to earth kind of guy. Now, some may kind of disagree with that because, you know, this is somebody that's a son of a billionaire and he is not doing that bad for himself. So they're like, how can he be a regular guy? Well, he just is. Some people are, quote unquote, irregular that have nothing. And some are regular, relatable, personable that have everything. That's just how that goes. Now, I'll get to some irregular people in a little bit. But overall, Thursday was great. From the time I landed, about 12 noon, I was talking to people. I was like, I did an interview in the airport, talking to people in the airport. I, You know, pictures, selfies, the Trump Jr. It, it was just a whole lot of stuff going on. Really enjoyed myself. So we fast forward to Friday. This is the big day, right? This is when we go to the White House. So I'm kind of nervous before I go to bed on Thursday night, but at the same time, I'm just ready to get to the next day. Um, I'm not as much nervous as I am excited, if that makes any sense. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But either way, I got an okay night's sleep before Friday. And Friday, I wake up, I get up, shave, put on my suit, do all that good stuff. And we all meet at the lobby. Some people walked to the White House because from the liaison in the Hyatt, which is, you know, right there, obviously, it's about a 20 minute walk to the White House. But I'm like, OK, I'm going to just go ahead and get an Uber. So I think myself and Jermaine Basio got in the Uber and went down to the southeast gate, which is where we were able to wait for a while and then enter the White House. Now, I do have some footage of this particular period of time on my Facebook page. And again, I'll place that on a separate video. So you're able to see all the footage inside the White House, outside the White House and one thing. So it won't just be right here in the experience video. So fast forward a little bit, we get into the White House. Now the White House is opulent. I mean, it is beautiful on the inside and it's just a real experience to even be in there. It was, I, I, it's really hard to explain. You had a live band playing. I think that was a Marine band playing. If anybody's in the service or if you've been to the White House before or if you were there at YBLS and you know better than me, please correct me in the box below if I'm wrong. But the, the band was beautiful. The food was great. Uh, everybody was just so nice on the inside. Secret service, people that were just in there. I'm not really sure what they were called. They were guards or whatever they were. But everybody was just super nice. And the atmosphere was one of just um, it was just elation. People that were just kind of in a surreal state that they were in the White House. It was great. So fast forward a little bit and President Trump comes out. Now, I think we got to the White House at about 1030. Well, we got inside the White House. We were at the gate right around 945 or 930. You got to get there a little bit early before the gates open rather than trying to get there late after the gates close. So we get in the White House, go through security checkpoints and whatnot. I think it were three security checkpoints just to make sure everything is good, no contraband, none of that good stuff, which was A-OK -okay with me. So we get in the White House right around 1030. We're just mingling, talking, taking pictures, doing streams, everything else. And then Trump comes out right around 1 o'clock, and he gives a speech that's about 45 minutes. I had no idea what this would be before we went there. I didn't know if it would be something where he spoke to all of us, like, or the, it, the influencers, which I'll get to in a little bit directly. I didn't know what it was going to be, but what I felt like it was, was a Trump rally inside the White House. The, the energy was so positive. It was just overwhelming. It was infectious. It was really just, you know, a, a fantastic experience. Charlie Kirk told us that backstage, he told Trump, that is, told him and Candace that he thanked them for bringing us. And during the speech, Trump was talking about how he normally comes out there. He gives a few words. He gets a little pitter patter of applause. And it's usually kind of boring when you're in the East Wing. But when we were in there, it was exciting. He could feel the energy. And I appreciated that. See, and that's what I was talking about. The same thing I said with Don Jr. I can say the same thing for Donald Trump. These people are not regular by any stretch of the imagination. However, they can speak to you in a regular way, which is what I really appreciate. So that was right on it. So we fast forward from that. What's this? Um, this is Friday. So this day, we were free the rest of the day. Friday, 
my father comes in from Norfolk, drives to D.C. I have family in D.C., so I'll go to Southeast, go to my uncle's house, hang out with him. My uncle's 86 years old, and also my aunt, who's like right around the same age. Now, this is my father's uncle, you understand? So that's my, my great uncle, but I always called him uncle. So that was good to see some family, to get a little bit of a break from the event and go do that. That was good. I come back right around, I say, 6 o'clock because the White House thing was over right around 3. I come back at 6. Oh, I'm kind of skipping ahead here. After the White House, we had a rally outside. Now, some of you may have seen some clips from the rally. I spoke a little bit, but I didn't really do that well. I did okay just to kind of get people started. But you had guys like Terrence Williams. Terrence Williams did a great job. Funny guy. Naturally funny person. My man, Mark, I cannot pronounce his last name. I'm sorry, boss, but you know who you are. He did a good job. Brandon spoke. Kenneth Owens spoke. Uh, Amazing Lucas is a great speaker. He spoke. Uh, David Harris Jr. and a few other guys. Some guys had some things I didn't agree with what they said, but it's okay. Everybody was able to, not everybody, but people were able to get out there on the bullhorn, megaphone, whatever you want to call it, and speak breitbart did a great job of covering this by the way and if you go to their facebook page website or whatever you'll be able to find a lot of these videos from this particular event so that was that it was a nice little rally it was catered we had food out there you're able to get like some some sandwiches i think it was like a steak sandwich turkey sandwich with some chips that was good uh roland martin was there now i know a lot of you guys know who roland martin is i did an interview with him on his show well he interviewed me on his show when i was talking about that procter and gamble ad for this um it, it wasn't for a particular product per se but it was for their brand because they showed the brand at the end of the commercial and the topic was the talk right all black parents have the so-called talk with their children about white people and police and how they out to get you I never had that talk. So I was confronting him with that. And it's like, what's the issue? And he's saying it's crazy that you never had to talk. I'm like, why is it crazy? I asked him the question over and over again. He did not answer. And well, he did answer. I take that back. He said it's crazy because it's not normal. I'm like, just because it's not normal doesn't mean it's crazy. I mean, it may be normal for people to vote Democrat in the black community. That doesn't mean I'm crazy if I vote a different way. Okay, so his answer was not acceptable and then i was pointing out people in the crowd that were right behind me and i said hey have you had to talk about white folks and police from your parents some say they did some say they didn't it was like half and half he was pointing out those that did have to talk and was ignoring those that did not have to talk he's the kind of person that you can't talk to and i saw that a little bit in a debate he had with um jason whitlock who also was there and i get to in a little bit he, he'll speak in circles to prevent actually addressing the issue but i'll move on so the rest of that day it wasn't a whole lot going on we were just you know um hanging out at the lobby some guys with different places doing different things just you know having a good time outside of the actual event but still connecting with each other uh, a lot of connections are made a lot of friendships were made you know i, I was down in the um the lobby of the hyatt eating and i was meeting with guys there just talking, just, it was really good. You know, shout out to my man, Jermaine Bacio, Leo Dunson, uh, Will Johnson, David Harris Jr., uh, the whole squad, and everyone else knew I met. I cannot remember everybody's name right now at this moment, but all you people were beautiful. You were great. You were excellent. But moving right along to Saturday, this was the day of all the speakers, and you saw when I was streaming on the inside. I have this phone here, this Huawei. I just got this, no plug, I just got this, on Amazon like the day before I left and I went and get a I got a plan for Metro PCS because this phone does not have an unlimited data plan on it so I but I, I was able to use it still two phones like so if you saw the stream you saw that at a certain point the image was staying still it wasn't moving at all because in the beginning I had a selfie stick trying to record I think I did that with uh, Stacey Dash Maybe even uh, Ben Carson when he came out and spoke. Oh, and I also met Ben Carson at the White House. I shook his hand and I told him, thank you for being yourself and just doing what you do. Uh, I told my father this. He got really excited. And, you know, dad's a pretty liberal guy. 
although I say he's a conservative, that's a different story. He got excited about me meeting Ben Carson, and he was like, well, why didn't you ask this and this and this? I was like, Dad, come on. I only had about, like, two seconds, and then I was taken off guard. I had no idea I was going to be able to meet him. I just happened to be walking in his same direction, and I came face-to-face with him. I just took my hand out, shook his hand, and just gave him a couple words and let him go about his business. But let's get back to Friday. So at a certain point, I had my selfie stick I'm filming, and then – my man, and shout out to you, boss. He was there with his wife, and I think his wife's friend. He gave me a tripod, and it's the same tripod I have right here on my camera. And I almost brought this tripod I have, but I didn't want to detach it from my camera because it's very difficult to get it centered the way I want it and have it look right. So I used my selfie stick, but the tripod worked, and I was able to have the camera there, and my other phone was used to respond to people. And to do any kind of banning of trolls if I had to. But shout out to the moderators, Bill from the Hills, everybody. You guys did great. But I keep going. So Stacey Dash did an excellent job in her speak. Uh, I did not expect her to do such a good job. I'm not saying that I thought she was going to do bad. But I had no idea that it would be so impactful and it would be so inspiring. She did an excellent job. Ben Carson did well. Larry Elder did well. And I was really just kind of fanning out at Larry Elder because a lot of my particular talking points I get from Larry Elder. See, I researched a lot of people that have come before me because I understand that they know more than I know. I'm a young man compared to them. Compared to some of the kids that were at the event, I'm like an older person, like a father figure in a sense. But when I look at myself compared to the greats of the game, your Larry Elders, your Rush Limbaugh's, your Mark Levin's, your Thomas Souls, all these guys that either have big platforms on television, radio, or have big impacts in the intellectual world from a conservative point of view, I see myself as a young person trying to attain their level. But I move on. Larry Elder did a great job. Uh, Coleon Noir from NRA did a great job. Uh, A lot of great speakers were present at this particular event. Um, We had lunch that particular day. It was great. You're talking about like some of the best food. It was some kind of pasta. That was good. Uh, The chicken. uh, It was like some kind of grilled chicken breast with some kind of sauce on it. It was marvelous. Um, the, The food was good at the Liaison Hotel in D.C. Actually, was that the Liaison I think it was liaison or the Hyatt. I I couldn't really tell you where I was. I was just doing so much, speaking so much. I'm surprised I'm able to speak right now, considering how much talking I was doing. One thing I want to say is that people ask me all the time, what was the point of this event? Why even have this? Why have a young black leadership summit? Why not have a young white leadership summit? And I'm going to get back to the summary in a minute, but I need to go off on the tangent here. The reason why we need to have a young black leadership summit is because A lot of black people feel kind of lonely being conservative. They feel like a lot of their friends and family, many of whom are black, are going to just, you know, cast them away because of their political points of view. And a lot of times that's true. They got to keep fighting with their mom, fighting with their dad, fighting with their cousins and people that they grew up with and played with. And it it gets to be really exhausting. And you want to have people that look like you that share your same experiences okay it's not about being segregationist it's just a simple fact that if you are a white person it's difficult to understand the dynamics behind being black and conservative you understand what i'm saying so i think this was needed for that to build a community of people that have similar experiences that most other people in dominant society just don't have and that's okay It's not about trying to be anti this, anti that. It's about trying to lift each other up by those who have had experiences like yourself. But I keep going. So people came up to me. They were asking me questions about how to get a YouTube channel started, how to do with family members. Uh, People were asking me about apps they design. I mean, all kind of stuff. So most of the event I spent just talking to people. And that was really the highlight and what I really wanted to gain from the thing to begin with, to build a network of people. I got a lot of people's phone numbers, the email addresses, social media, people want to do collaborations and I'm all with it. So if anybody asks, what was the point of the event? You could tell them building a community of people. I feel like a lot of people left there with a sense of a new family 
people that they can rely on, they can trust, they can depend on, that they can talk to about their particular experiences. And also, uh, new network of people. You know, I'm, I'm telling you everything I know. People have been watching me for years sometimes, and they want to ask me particular questions. I'm able to answer all of that. So I think that was the main thing. And obviously, we got the midterms coming up. We want to encourage you to go out there and vote the right way, pun intended. And that's pretty much what it is. So moving right along, Friday, it was just after the speakers, all of whom were great. It was like a lot of uh, just talking. Oh, and by the way, David Harris Jr., if you're watching, you did a great job. I want you guys to go out there. And if you could find it somewhere, I, unfortunately, I didn't record his. But if you could find that speech somewhere from David Harris Jr., go out there and find it and buy that book he has. You did a great job, boss. But Saturday, this was the last day of full events. You know, so this is the day when things are winding down. Sunday was the last day we were there. You know, um, everybody pretty much was leaving right around 11 or 12. People had different flights. People came from cross country, you know, they had to drive back sometimes. So these were very important times to go ahead and get on the road. So not everybody was able to be in the last group of speakers because they had to go. But you had a guy, I think his name was Clay Dub. I was not there for that one. I had to do some other things. But Clay Dub, he was a music artist. He spoke. Um, who else? It was a couple other guys, but I came in towards the end where you had a woman talking about prison reform. And that was really interesting. She was talking about how, you know, people are not getting prosecuted and sent to prison for weed. And that's the truth. Uh, I remember watching on TV when I was in Virginia, a police officer got on TV and said that he pulled somebody over with a little bit of weed in his car and let him go. If the police were to be pulling everybody over for weed and locking them up, sending them to the prisons, that's all that they were being in prison because weed is so common. It's like not even really worth it. People do go to jail for weed, but it's like... If you are a dealer pushing a large amount, you know, if you got 15 pounds in your car or something like that. But if you got a joint in your ashtray, you're not going to go to jail. Maybe you get arrested. You might get held for a few hours and then let go. It's not even really worth it to the courts to bring these cases through the system. It costs too much money with little to no actual positive results. And then there was a speaker talking about how. Uh, your mind kind of plays tricks on you when you allow certain things in. Her name was Busy Gold. She's on Instagram. Follow her. Great speaker. Really enjoyed her talk. And at the end of this day on Sunday, you had Charlie Kirk. Now, Charlie Kirk, my man, <laughs> I didn't know you can get so rowdy, man. You know, you, you gave a great speech at the end. Really high energy, really encouraging. And that was the main thing that I think that people could take away from this event was how encouraging it was. Oh, and I almost forgot when I was thinking about Charlie I remember his shirt he had on. He had on the Blexit shirt. And that brings me to my next point, which was on Saturday to go back then, which was the Blexit reveal. Now, those of us that are the influencers had been talking about Blexit for a long time. It had been planned before we even went to Phoenix. So I've known about Blexit for a minute, but we were all told don't say anything until they reveal it. And they got revealed here. Now, people wanted Kanye West to be here, but unfortunately, he was not able to be. However, he did design the shirts. So we got some merchandise. And if I could find it, I'll place it on the screen. We had my man Tony X give a speech about his time in prison and how he was able to turn his life around. That was a great speech. Candace gave a speech. That was great. Brandon Taylor spoke for a moment, if I'm not mistaken. That was great as well. Overall, it was a really uh, a good event. Got a lot of merch. We were able to film it. I was trying to film it. You know, you guys saw the video on my particular page. It was looking like oil painting in motion, <laughs> but you could hear the audio pretty well. So just think about it as a podcast type of thing. So that was that that particular day. After that, I think people were just, you know, hanging out, talking, and that was pretty much the end. Was that Friday? I can't remember. That might have been Friday when we had Black Set. Friday, I think it was Saturday, but I can't remember. Because there was so much stuff going on, and I was so busy throughout the whole time. I, I just couldn't really remember what day was what. It was just really, really great. So after Charlie Speaks on Sunday, that's pretty much the end. We all go our separate ways, and people don't want to leave. Everybody's kind of having long faces in the lobbies and whatnot and outside. Nobody wants to leave because it was so great. It was great to be around so many great individuals that were like-minded like yourself. 
if it, it feels like after a long time of being by yourself, isolated without a person to talk to now, you have hundreds of people that feel the same way you feel. Now you have a new family. So we're keeping contact. We have Facebook groups and stuff like that that we're all in, you know, little private groups. So we're going to keep in contact. So that's pretty much all I got for that. You know, there was some controversy that happened, a little bit of drama, but I did not speak about that because I think that got handled pretty quickly. And it's not something I really want to focus on. People want to make videos and talk about it. And that's that's on them. You know, I'm focused on YBLS, the positivity that was there, the negativity, the little small things that happened were insignificant, didn't make an impact on the event. The event was a 100 percent success. And I can't wait until we all meet again. So like I said, I do have video of this. Uh, I'll put together the video that's not on my YouTube into a compilation that was on Facebook and stuff like that. And if I could find anything from other people that I was in, I put that in a nice video. And then I'll talk about what Al Sharpton said in a separate video. So that's all I got from my experience. And hopefully you enjoyed it. If you were there at the event, please let me know who you are and what your experience was in the comments below. And if you want to just give me your thoughts about it in general, please let me know in the comments below.